A multi-band compressor is one of the best ways to enhance your track in the mastering process. And luckily for us, Final Touch here on the iPad has the Dynamics module, which is a four-band compressor. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use it. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today, where at the moment I'm helping you learn how to master your tracks using the amazing Final Touch Mastering app here on the iPad. And in this video, we're diving into multi-band compression using the Dynamics module. Before we jump in though, a quick crash course if you're new to compression. What is a compressor and what does it do? Compression is the process of actually removing the peaks from our audio. So the reason that compression makes things louder is it actually pushes everything down. It pushes your peaks down and then you bring the whole volume up, which actually removes what we call the dynamic range, meaning that you've got less highs and lows and less difference between your loud and your quiet signals. But what it does do is it gives you a more even performance. Instead of having some really loud parts and really quiet parts, it smooths out the performance. So as part of mastering, a multi-band compressor can actually really help smooth out any of those sections of our tracks or any frequencies that are actually too loud or too soft and not sitting nicely in the mix. So let's jump in now and take a look at how to use the Dynamics module here in Final Touch on the iPad. All right, settle in, grab a cuppa, because there is a lot to talk about here with the Dynamics module. So as we mentioned in the intro, Dynamics module here is just a multi-band compressor, which means that we have one, two, three, four bands here, and each one of these is their own individual compressor that we can adjust the settings independently on by adjusting these settings down here at the bottom. So we can adjust attack, threshold, release, ratio, and gain on each of these four independent bands, and then we can switch switch between these and take a listen to what the changes have actually done to our mix. So let's jump in now and take you through the interface so that you can learn how to use the Dynamics module here in Final Touch. As with all of our modules, to bring it in to our effects chain, we tap and drag it down the bottom here, or we use the power button in the top left corner. To the right of that, where we have the reset on at the moment, we can tap that to reset, or we can use any one of our presets here. And in fact, we're going to select the Rock Dynamics preset here, just to help explain what's going on here with our multi-brand compressor. So let's tap out of that. And what has it done here? Well, it's made some settings here across these four bands, and you can see the gain by by looking at how high or how low each of these are. So you can actually see here that we've got 3 dB of gain. This is on our knob down here in the bottom right if we want to adjust it manually, or we can tap and drag to adjust the gain up and down there as well. We can look at the rest of these as we go across. This one has 5 dB of gain, 5 dB and 7 dB of gain. The other thing we can adjust here in our XY pad is where these compression bands are. And these are bands of compression at different frequencies. So if we tap and move this, we can move this, say let's move this to 100 hertz. Now everything in this compressor is working at that lower than 100 hertz band. We can then tap on this one and you can see this is between 100 hertz and we can drag it across and let's say we wanted this between 100 and 500 hertz, we can line it up like that. This one here, the same deal. We can adjust that and put it at 5 kilohertz, 5,000 hertz there and that is where that compression will take place because all a multi-band compressor is, is is four independent compressors, but the cool thing about them is that they will only compress any audio that's in that frequency range. So for example, this is only gonna compress our top end. Anything at five kilohertz and above will be compressed at a high amount, and then our mids will be compressed a little bit, and our low end only gets a small amount of compression. So this way, we can control our mix with really good accuracy because we can decide how much we wanna compress at every different frequency level. Let's look at the different dials that we have for each compressor, and these can be set independently. So let's look at this first one here at our base frequencies. The attack here is at 0.9 milliseconds, and we can grab this dial and dial it up or dial it down to have a quicker attack or a slower attack, which is how quickly our compression will actually kick in when it hits the threshold, which is our next option here. So we can dial our threshold, and this will determine at what volume that actually kicks in. So if we want more compression, we can drop the threshold 
to make sure that more compression is applied because it's going to apply it when the volume is higher and therefore create more compression. The next one here is our release. So this is how long it is held before it is released in compression. So a fast release will mean that as soon as the volume drops down below that level, it will release and it will stop compressing. If we put the, the release number right up, it's going to hold on to it and it's going to keep compressing for a long time after it has hit that, even if the volume drops back down again. So we can adjust that. The ratio is how much compression is applied and we could do a whole video just on compression ratio, but more is more, less is less is as much detail as we're going to go with here. So if you want more compression, once you hit that threshold, you dial your ratio up, less compression, you dial the ratio down. And finally, we have our gain, which is the makeup gain that we're going to actually add into this. And you'll notice here that when we dial the gain up, it actually dials it up on our visual over there on the left. So we can dial it down and it will go down like so. So we'll double tap. Any of these that we double tap will go back to the center like that. Now that gives you a bit of a view of how we can use all of these. Now, if we want to adjust each independent one, we can tap these and you'll notice that we can adjust these and they don't have have any bearing on the other ones. They will all stay completely independent. And that's one thing that a lot of folks don't understand about the multiband compressor. So I want to make that really clear that each individual band has its own settings down the bottom here. The way that you can change that to be the same if you wanted to is all of these have a little all button here. So if we tap the all button, now we can control the gain for all of these by dragging it up and down or by, by moving our dial here. And let's say we wanted the ratio of all of these to be linked. We can tap that. Now our ratio We'll dial up to say, uh, let's bring it around to 6.7. Now we can see that each of these has a ratio of that 6.7 because we have that all set. If we take those all off, we can now adjust them independently again to whatever settings that we want. So that is a quick crash course in how to use all of these dials across our different bands. Now let's show you how we can use these in our mix. Okay, we've messed up our settings here. So let's go to Rock Dynamics and tap it again to go back to these settings. So you can see here, what we've got is we've got a little bit of a boost here across all of these different bands. And now that you understand how that all works, you'll be able to understand why that is different across the board and our different settings. So let's just take this off to start with. I'm going to play the track and then I'll turn it on and you'll hear the difference that the compression at these different bands is going to make to our track. They don't have to work, they don't have to lift a finger, go tap it easy other. So you can really hear how the multiband compressor can make your tracks really pop, but you have to be really careful because did you notice that over here on the right, we were clipping our output signals. So let's play it again. This time, watch the metering over on the output meter and our main meters and watch what happens. They don't have a care and I want to be as free as go. So we are definitely clipping, which is telling us that we're applying some fairly high levels of compression here. What we can do is either drop our output gain here, or we can drop the dB, or we can drop the uh, the actual gain on some of these. So let's just, uh, we'll reset to the rock dynamics again, and I'll just show you how if you did want this to be your dynamics and your compression, how we can ride the output gain down to make sure we're not clipping. Oh, I think that I So there you go, we're still getting that compression, but we're not going to be clipping our output signal. Now I'm going to play again. This time I want to want you to watch the little waves that, that go underneath our compression settings. This is the attenuation, the amount of compression that's being applied. So again, you can see if it's going really extreme or if it's actually a small amount of compression. Let's hit play again. Things you say and do. So you can see there that, yeah, we're clipping again, so we need to ride that down even further, but we're only getting a small amount there. Now, if we wanted to increase that, what we can do is we'll dial up the ratio and we'll drop the threshold, and I'll show you what will happen and what will happen to our sound as well. So let's hit play, and what I'm going to do is grab this mid-range, and I'm going to dial up the ratio and dial down the threshold to see what we can do. Hey, 
So you can see we're getting a pretty extreme sound. Now, this is not what you'd want to do in a master, but if you were bringing another sound in here that you wanted to play around with and you wanted some extreme difference in your sound, then maybe you can do that. So you can have complete control. And the beauty part is, as I mentioned, you can do this at our different frequencies. So now let's jump in and show you how we can mute and solo our frequencies to really fine tune our sound. So I've reset back to our rock dynamics again, and I've got our lower band here. So this is everything that's below around about that 100 hertz mark. In fact, let's just make it, yeah, right there on 100 hertz. So this is our low frequency. What we can do is if we tap the button down here to solo, or mute, we can actually solo out just this part or we can mute it. Now, this is super cool. Let's, let's solo just our bass frequencies and have a listen to what the compression is doing on our bass frequencies. So if you've ever, ever wanted to hear what is actually happening at those different levels and what's happening at your frequency sees below 100 hertz, now you know that's the sort of sound you get. Let's do the same again. We'll tap on, actually we'll tap that one, we'll unsolo it. Let's tap on our high frequencies and hit solo and let's do the same here. Pretty cool, yeah. So now we can actually make our adjustments as we're listening at that different frequency. So let's just play back a section and I'll dial in some different settings here and see if we can adjust just the treble frequencies of our multiband compressor. And hopefully you could hear and also see the difference there on the meter of what was happening when we were making those changes. We, we saw different levels of attenuation based on where we dial the threshold and how much ratio we actually dial in here. Now, if this is all getting a little bit much and a bit overwhelming, don't stress. You can always jump back and use your presets. And there's some things that we have here, like our thick and warm, that are going to be a lot lower and they're not actually going to impact your sound as much. So my advice would be to experiment with some of those and as you're learning to use the multiband compressor, come in here and see what some of these presets do because that's going to help you learn how you can actually use the multiband compressor here in the Dynamics module yourself. Now we mentioned it before, but we can also use mute. So let's just mute both our top end and our low end and let's have a listen to just our mid-range frequencies here now. Don't have to work, they don't have to lift a finger. Don't have it easy so you can actually solo and mute to your heart's content here. Whichever ones you want to hear or not hear, you can use your solo and mute there under the name of the band. And again, to select different ones, you just tap on each of these bands. And don't forget, we can adjust using these lines to see which different bands are going to be impacted here and what frequencies those bands start and finish at. So if you want to just do your absolute high frequencies, you can. If you want to have a big mid-range here, you can do that. You can adjust that to whatever you want to do. And again, play around with those presets and that's going to help you learn what works and what doesn't work with your multiband EQ and compressor. Now that was a big one. If you're still with me, give yourself a little golf clap because you've done well, but let's recap on what we've been through in this particular video because it's been a lot. So we have our dynamics module. It's a multi-band compressor. What we can do is we can select between one, two, three, four bands here, and then we can individually adjust using our knobs at the bottom here because each one of these is its own individual compressor with its individual settings. We can, however, tap our little all buttons down the bottom here if we want to impact all of our different compressors the same so that all four bands are adjusted equally. We can also tap and mute or solo an individual band for playback, which is a cool option. Don't forget we have our input and our output meters here. So make sure we're not clipping at any time. We can adjust our input and our output gain, and we can use our very cool presets up the top here to try out and to expand upon all of the different settings that we have in here. The things that we haven't mentioned in this is our link option, which we've talked about in previous videos. If you go back and check out those ones and check out the whole series, you'll learn how to use your link and your unlink link and our stereo and mid side. So we can also use stereo and mid side here to adjust the left and right independently or go to mid side to do the mid, the center frequencies and our side, uh, side frequencies separately here for our compressors. So that is going to do it. That is our dynamics module, our multi-band compressor here in Final Touch. 
Phew, yes, there was a lot to get through in that one, but we got there. How cool is the Dynamics module here in Final Touch? Have a play with it, learn to use it in the next video where we're looking at the Stereo Imager, which is another cool module that we have here in Final Touch. I hope you can join me for that one. Check the links out down below in the meantime and head on over to studiolivetoday.com for more audio goodness.